The Space Shuttle Challenger disaster was a fatal incident on January 28, 1986, in the United States space program where the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight, killing all seven crew members aboard. The mission, designated STS-51L, was the 10th flight for the Orbiter Challenger and the 25th flight of the Space Shuttle fleet. The Space Shuttle was a partially reusable spacecraft operated by the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration. E-53 Space Shuttle main engines were mounted at the aft end of the orbiter and provided thrust during launch. 130-3942 The January 1985 launch of STS-51C was the coldest Space Shuttle launch to date. The Space Shuttle mission, named STS-51L, was the 25th Space Shuttle flight and the 10th flight of Challenger. The air temperature on January 28 was predicted to be a record low for a Space Shuttle launch. 101-103 Cecil Houston, the manager of the KSC office of the Marshall Space Flight Center, set up a conference call on the evening of January 27 to discuss the safety of the launch. 97-99 The engineers argued that they did not have enough data to determine whether the O-rings would seal at temperatures colder than 53 degrees Fahrenheit, the coldest launch of the space shuttle to date. 105 to 106 Morton Thiokol employees Robert Lund, the vice president of engineering, and Joe Kilminster, the vice president of the space booster programs, recommended against launching until the temperature was above 53 degrees Fahrenheit. 107 to 108. 97, 109 Lawrence Malloy, the NASA SRB project manager, 3 called Arnold Aldrich, the NASA mission management team leader, to discuss the launch decision and weather concerns, but did not mention the O-ring discussion the two agreed to proceed with the launch. Arnold Aldrich consulted with engineers at KSC and the Johnson Space Center who advised him that ICE did not threaten the safety of the orbiter, and he decided to proceed with the launch. The ICE team performed an inspection at T-20 minutes which indicated that the ice was melting, and Challenger was cleared to launch at 11.38 a.m. At T-0, Challenger launched from the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39B at 11.38.00 a.m. 17. E-76 beginning at T plus 0.678 until T plus 3.375 seconds, nine puffs of dark gray smoke were recorded escaping from the right-hand SRB near the aft strut that attached the booster to the ET. 19. E-93 It was later determined that these smoke puffs were caused by joint rotation in the aft field joint of the right-hand SRB at ignition. Unlike other spacecraft, crew escape was not possible during powered flight of a space shuttle. Launch escape systems had been considered during development, but NASA's conclusion was that the space shuttle's expected high reliability would preclude the need for one. 181 modified State Route 71 Blackbird ejection seats and full pressure suits were used for the two-person crews on the first four space shuttle orbital test flights, but they were disabled and later removed for the operational flights. Unidentified crew remains were buried at the Space Shuttle Challenger Memorial in Arlington on May 20, 1986. Soon after the disaster, U.S. politicians expressed concern that White House officials, including Chief of Staff Donald Reagan and Communications Director Pat Buchanan, had pressured NASA to launch Challenger before the scheduled January 28 State of the Union address, because Reagan had planned to mention the launch in his remarks. In that speech, Reagan had intended to mention an X-ray experiment launched on Challenger and designed by a guest he had invited to the address, but he did not further discuss the Challenger launch. In the rescheduled State of the Union address on February 4, Reagan mentioned the deceased Challenger crew members and modified his remarks about the X-ray experiment as launched and lost. In April 1986, the White House released a report that concluded there had been no pressure from the White House for NASA to launch Challenger prior to the State of the Union. Nationally televised coverage of the launch and explosion was provided by CNN. To promote the Teacher in Space program with McAuliffe as a crew member, NASA had arranged for many U.S. children to view the launch live at school. Press interest in the disaster increased in the following days. The number of reporters at KSC increased from 535 on the day of the launch to 1,467 reporters three days later. Until 2010, CNN's live broadcast of the launch and disaster was the only known on-location video footage from within range of the launch site. Information designer Edward Tuft has argued that the Challenger accident was the result of poor communications and overly complicated explanations on the part of engineer. That showing the correlation of ambient air temperature and O-ring erosion amounts would have been sufficient to communicate the potential dangers of the cold weather launch. The Presidential Commission on the Space Shuttle Challenger Accident, also known as the Rogers Commission after its chairman, was formed on February 6.
The commission held hearings that discussed the NASA accident investigation, the space shuttle program, and the Morton Thiokol recommendation to launch despite O-ring safety issues. After the space shuttle Columbia disaster in 2003, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board concluded that NASA had not effectively set up an independent office for safety oversight. The Teacher in Space program, which McAuliffe had been selected for, was cancelled in 1990 as a result of the Challenger disaster. These commercial payloads were reallocated from the Space Shuttle program to end the dependence on a single launch vehicle and limit the pressure on NASA to launch crewed missions to satisfy its customers. In 2004, President George W. Bush conferred posthumous Congressional Space Medals of Honor to all 14 crew members killed in the Challenger and Columbia accidents. The crew's families established the Challenger Center for Space Science Education as educational nonprofit organization. The 1986 motion picture star Trek IV, The Voyage Home was dedicated to the crew of the Challenger with an opening message which stated, The cast and crew of Star Trek wish to dedicate this film to the men and women of the spaceship Challenger whose courageous spirit shall live to the 23rd century and beyond. In 1996, Diane Vaughn published the Challenger launch decision, Risky Technology, Culture, and Deviance at NASA, which argues that NASA's structure and mission, rather than just space shuttle program management, created a climate of risk acceptance that resulted in the disaster. 592 In 2009, Alan McDonald published his memoir written with space historian James Hansen, Truth, Lies, and O-Rings, Inside the Space Shuttle Challenger Disaster, which focuses on his personal involvement in the launch, disaster, investigation, and return to flight, and is critical of NASA and Morton Thiokol leadership for agreeing to launch Challenger despite engineers' warnings about the O-rings. A film directed by Nathan Von Minden, The Challenger Disaster, was released on January 25, 2019, depicts fictional characters participating in the decision process to launch. Report to the President by the Presidential Commission on the Space Shuttle Challenger Accident Public Domain Audiobook at LibriVox. Space Shuttle Challenger Tragedy, Video of Shuttle Launch in Reagan's Address, YouTube. Challenger. A Rush to Launch, an Emmy Award-winning documentary about Flight STS-51L and what caused the Challenger explosion.